What's up guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass and we've got another buyer's guide for you today. Today we're combining two, we're talking lipless crankbaits, we're talking shallow crankbaits. Taking both categories, combining them into one, talking about all the different styles from big crankbaits down to little tiny offerings, let's do it. Really, lipless cranks and shallow square bill crankbaits could have been their own category, but we're running out of time. We wanna make sure we get this stuff in for you guys before the holiday sales are over and that you can get this stuff in time for Christmas. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off. Again, we got square bills and lipless cranks. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off with square bills mm -hmm. and I'm gonna start probably, we'll, we'll, we'll work our way down. We'll start with magnum size square bills and work our way down. Starting off, this is the BDS-6 by Lucky Craft. Now, it's not a very common crankbait, but where we really had fun with it was down south of the border in Baccarat, mm -hmm. chasing those giant, uh, giant largemouth. But the BDS-6, I'm really looking forward to putting it uh, to test here in, in Tennessee for, for you know springtime. But the BDS-6, it's, uh, it's a shallow running square bill, so it doesn't get that deep but you can cover a lot of cover. You can really get aggressive with it and really trigger those fish into eating, making them truly react and eating a big old meal. But the BDS-6 is a must have if you're chasing large fish. So my first one is the largest from Sixth Sense. It's a silent bait, as is the BDS-6, both totally silent. When you go to those really big profiles, go into that silent bait really makes a difference. Now, when you're throwing a square bill, there's two things to consider. One is the size of the bait fish you're trying to imitate. Are the bait fish you're seeing in the water little tiny, or are they great big? Are they threadfin, or are they gizzard shad? Right, so that BDS-6, you're chasing fish that are targeting great big meals. That's what they're eating. They're eating bluegill, they're eating gizzard shad, they're eating crappie, panfish downsizing from there you get all the way down to where they're eating little tiny bait fish so the size of what they're eating is the first consideration and then how deep you need to get or how shallow you need to stay is your second consideration those two things will choose the baits for you right so this sixth sense is a very large profile but not as big as the as the bds6 but still a very large profile silent, comes in some really good colors. Like every video, we'll give you our top two or three colors for every single bait. What I like about the Sixth Sense is it comes with good hardware. It's ready to fish right out of the pack. Just pop it open, go out, stick those fish. And again, it has some really, really good colors in that mid profile. Mm -hmm. It's much larger than a standard square bill, smaller than the true giant square bills. And a lot of the bait fish that we are around in the springtime are that size, right? Your bigger thread fins are that size. So when largemouth are moving up, they're coming up to feed before the spawn. It's a really, really good size. Yeah, all the six cents stuff, they all come with EWG hooks on them. So you don't mm -hmm. have to, uh, to change that stuff out if you don't want to, but uh, great colors in that as well. Uh, the next bait I'm gonna talk about, actually two baits, Mm -hmm. uh, I will st I'll stick with the BDS since I talked about the BDS-6. The BDS-3, another silent bait. Again, just like the 6, just a little bit smaller, but Matt touched on it, the shallow depths. It's, it's a bait that runs in that four to six foot depth range. So if that is the depth that you need to target to get those fish that are up shallow, blown up on shad, a BDS-3 is a must have. Like I said, it's a si silent bait. It's a lot smaller profile. And then also you can go with the 1.5 or the 2.5 depending on the depth range of the fish you're chasing. So those are probably the most all around, right? A Lucky Craft 1.5, 2.5. If you're throwing a silent bait, that's like, that's the bait. At the other end, we've got these guys. This is River to Seas Biggie. Two sizes, the exact same bait. So essentially, this would match Lucky Craft's 2.5. This would get very similar to the 1.5, but they're loud. These baits make a lot of commotion. They've got a really good sound to them. 
the biggie is my number one square bill. That's my just, if I'm going fishing, I want to throw a square bill, that is where I start. I throw the rattling bait. When Tim's right there next to me, he's throwing a 1.5 or a 2.5 silent. And we can very quickly determine, is today mm -hmm. a day where they want a silent bait? Is today where they want that sound, where they want to come out and just crash that thing? But that biggie is my standard, my place where I start. It's just that all around size, good sound, good colors, and they come out and eat that thing. Yeah, the next bait I want to talk about, downsizing. If you're if you're chasing fish that are really keying in on smaller baits, this is a new crankbait. This is by Mega Bass. This is the Super Z, the Z1. Again, a little square bill bait, but it's a lot smaller then a lot smaller than a traditional size square bill so you're still effectively fishing that shallow depth range but you're matching the hatch again mega bass you're paying for for awesome colorways terminal. and terminal tackle but that guy right there is a winner that little guy is what we smashed on if you guys were with us when we were drifting river in the kayaks we were slaying with that little z1 my next one is, is kind of an oddball in that it's a different shape. It's not a true square bill. It's got a little bit of a rounded bill, but this is a Little John. Little John is a flat-sided bait. So it's a completely different animal than all the others. But this is a bait that I turn to a lot in the early spring. We're a couple months away from where this bait is really going to shine. It has sound, but it's this it's like a soft ball that's in there. So it's completely different. It's a very, very low thud inside that bait. It's not a typical rattle, but it's that flat sided, tight actioned movement that is completely different and will get bit when a lot of those fatter bodied crankbaits will not. So early in the season, I like that tight action. Later in the season, I like those wider, harder kicking, flashier baits yeah just like all crankbaits different square bills have different action depending on water clarity water temperature depends on which one you're going to go with the last bait that i'm going to talk about is kind of like a it's that ultra shallow square bill like like less than a foot you know many many times on clear lake we were fishing grass flats or tops of grass that a lot of guys would be throwing a top water or a frog over, but if you could throw a square bill, something that you're burning, you're pausing, as it deflects off that grass, you're popping, you're getting real aggressive, subsurface, you could fish these effectively subsurface, mm -hmm. just taking the tops of the grass. This is actually, this is the Spro Fat John 50. Again, just like the other Spro Matt talked about, it's not a true square bill, it's kind of got a rounded, rounded bill, kind of that microchip bill, but a real aggressive thump, really and aggressive. The, the key is, ultra shallow when you have those fish that have the the shad pinned up in the very back of a cut and there's grass you know eight inches ten inches twelve inches under the surface you can't throw a normal square bill in there with getting gunked up fouled up so this guy right here an ultra shallow square bill is a must-have so in that same dirt shallow category there are a lot of companies that make small square bills there are very few that make shallow. ultra, ultra shallow yeah. square bills. That's a different animal. Mm -hmm. So that Spro does an amazing job up there. It's got a really wide bodied kick to it. On the other end, you've got the Evergreen. The Evergreen is a higher end brand. So you pay a little bit more for their, their stuff. They're just, they've placed themselves as a higher end brand. But this bait will go dirt, dirt, shallow, tighter action you can fish it really really fast they're a great one two punch together and again awesome hardware out the gate it's actually fairly heavy wire hardware out the gate you can hammer those fish drag them out of those shallows but both of these are those baits that will fish essentially in the mud right. i mean just as shallow as you can go so just to recap because that's a lot of baits and like every video we'll link all of it in the video description favorite colors for every single one of these but just to recap you've got sort of those key central baits that that 1.5 and 2.5 from lucky craft the and the biggie one is silent one rattles if your bait fish are bigger go to those bigger profiles if your bait fish are smaller go down to that little z1 
And if you need to get dirt, dirt shallow, got some options for that too. So they're really single baits for single applications, even though we're rattling off a bunch right. of them really fast. Right, they all have their key uh, conditions to shine, if you will. Now, if we were smart and we hadn't stacked these videos so tight, this would end right here. But now let's completely transition and let's talk lipless. Yeah, lipless cranks, obviously you guys know how much we love lipless cranks and how often we fish them. So we're gonna kind of do a uh, narrow down buyer's guide for lipless cranks because they can be fished so many different ways. They can be fished shallow, they can fish deep, slow, burning them across grass flats, all that sort of stuff. So we have probably our, what, five or six, eh, six yeah, baits or so? Yeah, let's structure it like the same way, like big profile, our bread and butter baits. Okay, and then Little maybe, guy, I've got a little guy, and then like budget, budget. Okay. yes. So big, so sticking with the big category, this is the Sixth Sense Quake 80. Now it comes also in the 70 size, but the Quake 80, what I like about that is it's a larger profile. So like Matt said, if you're targeting bluegill, larger shad, just bait fish that are bigger, baby crappie that are kind of a bigger profile, upsize your bait and you don't necessarily have to upsize the weight of the bait. So you don't need to throw a two ounce lipless crank, crank right. in you know six feet of water, right? So the Quake 80, again, you're getting EWG, uh, style hooks right out of the package. Six Sense has great color schemes, colorways, but that guy right there is another winner. Uh, we fished a lot of those down in Mexico as well. Mm -hmm. Along that same large profile, this is the Spro Aruku Shad, and it's the big one. Uh, the biggest thing here is just profile. A lot of the biggest baits that we used to like got discontinued, like an LVR D15. Mm -hmm. That thing's been gone for so long now, and it was a great bait. The problem was, until fairly recently, you were left with some options that the average angler didn't want to throw. Like you could throw, if you were throwing a rattle trap as an example, an ounce or an ounce and a half rattle trap is gigantic. Giant, right. There wasn't a lot in the middle. Both of these are great options. We're just the shad are bigger. You don't need a giant bait. You need a bait that properly matches them. So this guy is a little bit higher pitched sound. That one's a little bit lower pitched sound, but both great profiles, chucking and winding, burning in shallower water, fishing on top of grass flats in the springtime. Those are both really good options. All right, now both are probably our number one lipless crank. If we could choose any of them to be able to fish different ways is gonna be the Lucky Craft. LV 500. Again, we've beat this horse for years. It is, <laughs> it is caught so many big ones for us. So many tournaments have been won on it. The LV 500. What is key about this bait? What makes this bait special is it's a smaller profile, but a heavier profile. It's a three-quarter mm -hmm. ounce bait, so you can truly get reactive. You know, hopping these things like we've taught you in our in our in-depth videos. Hopping these things on bottom as that thing falls down quickly, those fish react and eat it like a jig. But an LV 500. You can burn it across flat, grass flats. You can fire it out there, fish rock piles in 30, 40 feet and fish it deep if you want. Hop it on bottom so many different ways, but because it's a three quarter ounce bait, you get that true reactive bite on the fall. Of course, you'll eat them. You know, they'll come up and crush it if you're burning it across the flat, but when you're hopping it and letting it fall, hopping it and letting it fall, dong, I mean, they, they eat it because how quickly it falls. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's, I don't know what else to say about the LV500 You're, that we haven't said already. You get pumped about that bait <laughs> for good reason. And the LV is funny. So we've, over the years, we've had all these theories because that bait is magical. So every once in a while in fishing, you run across one of those baits that we just say has it, right? It's got the magical something. They just eat it. We've had so many theories about why that's the bait. We had this theory that when it fell to bottom, it always fell a certain way. It looked so good. We finally went and threw it in a test tank Underwater. so we could see yeah. what it looked like. To my eye, it looked like garbage. <laughs> that's not what the thing is, but it still has it. I don't know what it is, but I know if a guy is out fishing, if you're hopping bottom and you're not throwing an LV, you're wasting time. If you are fishing you know, a lot of lipless, you just chuck and wind. There are great baits, and we're gonna get to those. The budget baits are great for fishing really shallow, shallow right. like less than five or six foot. But a lot of times those fish sit on those flats in like six to 12, six to 15 feet of water. The LV is an amazing bait 
for fishing a little bit Keep lower right. in the column, even on just that steady retrieve. It's a perfect crossover to a true crankbait, right? A lipped crankbait. Along those same lines is the Jackal. The Jackal comes in a few different sizes, but this is the TN70. And that fishes very similarly to an LV500. Now, if I'm hopping bottom, I pick up the LV500 first. For me, if I'm burning, straight retrieving, I pick up the TN70 first. There's just something about it. Sound. Different sound, yeah. And it just gets those fish on that straight retrieve. They both fish lower in the column than some of the budget options. But that TN70, Tennessee River, they eat it. They eat it really, really well. <laughs> it's just one of those baits that you have to add to the arsenal. Now this year they plugged in, they make a 70, a 60, and they plugged in a 50. The 70 and the 50 are my two favorites. The 70 just has that full profile. It's a heavy bait. It'll chuck a mile. The little 50 is exactly that, little. This little guy in the fall is a perfect size match to those little bait fish, right? They spawned in the spring, they start growing. You've got little shad, little bluegill, little crappie. That 50 size just sticks those fish. Size profile wise, it's a lot like the blade baits that we fish, mm -hmm. but it's no blade bait. It's a true lipless. Lip -less. That's a really fun option. Now for those of you guys that have never thrown a lipless crank or are looking to get into lipless crankbait fishing or just want to fish a larger profile shallower, the actual rattle tra trap is, it's a must have. It's a lot similar profile to an LV, but a lot lighter. You know, if you go to throw a three quarter ounce a rattle trap or a one ounce rattle trap, they're gonna be giant. But you can throw this guy up shallow, it's gonna come across the tops of that grass a lot better. It's not as expensive as some of these other baits. So if you have never thrown a lipless crank and you want to try it, check out this guy right here. A buyer's guide would not be complete if an airplane didn't fly over and a the chainsaw <laughs> wasn't running in the woods. That is how this works. So you guys just stick with us. We've got one more bait here for you last guy and then we could talk a little bit about gear and some of that stuff but this is very similar profile wise to a rattle trap this is a cotton cordell spot this little guy is cheap inexpensive it, it is a cheap couple of bucks bait yeah high pitched sound very high pitched sound comes in just a handful of color options but is a bait that i just continue to smash with. We discovered this bait on the California Delta and have since thrown it all over the country. It stays high in the column. It sinks much slower than some of the other options. So when you're fishing shallow, throwing all the way up to the bank on a flat, fishing over the tops of grass, it stays up high. It's got that unique higher pitch sound and it just catches those fish. We were laughing Back in January, we were in Guyana. We were clear down in South America. The first fish that I caught in <laughs> South America was on a cotton cordell spot. We could have taken anything down there, but when I'm loading my box, I'm like, I don't know what I'm facing. A spot, even though it's a cheap bait, makes the cut. That's a bait that I wanted to take because I knew I could fish really shallow. So different baits, for different scenarios. Again, we'll break them down in the description with favorite colors for every single one to help you guys. Yeah, so there you have it, guys. There's the lipless cranks, the square bills, and the chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys like this video, remember, uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. But just like every video, we'll link everything down below in the video description. These are our must-haves. Every bait has its time and its place to shine. They all have the different depths that they run and the different actions, the wobbles, yep. the tight, the wide. But uh, we'll link all of that stuff down below in the video description. We'll also link rods. Uh, we'll just, we didn't even talk about it. This late into the season, you know, a lot of stuff is back ordered. It's hard to get, but we will still link our favorites for you so we know so you know what they are. Check some of them might be available. They might have gotten restocked. We don't know. 
um, but we will link those as well. Yeah, we get these buyer's guide requests all throughout the year. So yeah, a lot of the stuff might be sold out already, but come check in a couple weeks, a month or two, a lot of that stuff will be back in stock. Right. And you guys will have your buyer's guide for the rest of the year because these baits will work year round. 12 months out of the year, 365 days, uh, you will catch fish on these baits. But again, we appreciate you guys. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. See you guys.